guys, girls, um, Steve Sisler here, and I want to talk to you today about the criminal mind, um, because we have criminal minds in our workplaces. <laughs> you might be married to somebody with a criminal mind, um, but how can we spot it here at uh, the Behavioral Resource Group? So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to um, take you through a couple images um, from our Living Trilogy assessment platform. Um, and uh, painstakingly kind of just draw you through the emotions, the primary emotions, and um, the motivational orientations. And dang it. Um, uh, there's, <laughs> there was another orientation I wanted to show you. Um, uh, and I, let me, let me try something here. Um, so if you, if you bear with me for a minute, um, you know, I'm going to, uh, pull it up, um, uh, and then I'm going to have to crop it and, I'm going to have to put it into the lineup. I, 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 I can't believe I um, forgot it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, so I hope you're doing well, folks. <laughs> uh, oh, God, there's a couple things I... I should have done. Um, let me do this. I'm going to capture this particular image. Now I'm taking these images right off the portal. So if you basically uh, were assessed um, and uh, you would be given access, you know, to your platform and you'd be able to see all this. Um, so, uh, uh, what about this here? Yeah, that's, that's a really good image there. Uh, capture, capturing the behavioral matrix here. Um, so you're learning about me. Um, I started the video and I really wasn't prepared, but I thought I was. Um, uh, that's, um, wow, this is going to be so good. Dad Um this is going to be so good. It's going to be worth the wait. So just hold on a second. Um, uh, I've got to do better than this. See, this is why I don't like... I don't like doing these because I'm so screwed up this way. Um, uh, this is just my brain, you know, um, and uh, it, it gets in my way like this. Um, all right, let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of this. Um, okay, let me add these images into Ecamm Live. Um, uh, uh, oh, hold on a second. There's one. Oh, let's do this. Open. Okay. That's in, um, we're getting there. I got one more to add. There it is. Open. Um, okay. Um, let me get these out here. Um, all right. Sorry about that. Let's, um, uh, let's, let's continue. All right. We're, we're ready to go. Sorry. I, I just feel stupid. Um, uh, let, let's look at this image. I'll move over here. Um, so really, let's look at the behavioral, um, orientations behavioral orientations are made up of two things number one concealed behaviors 
that's the uh, icon image of one human on the left. You know, where is it? Right, right there. Let me see. You see it right, 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 right there. And then down here, that comment, uh, you see there's multiple people. So the single people icon is really about your concealed behavior. We call your behavior concealed because you don't know about it. You're not paying attention to it. You're, I don't want to say you're blind to it, but what's happening is, is you're not, you're not thinking about it. It's, it's a more natural, I want to say visceral self, um, before you make any adjustments to any kind of an environment, it's just you. Um, and then when you're making adjustments based upon whatever environment you're in, which would be work, you're out to dinner, it, all these environments will dictate, in a sense, the type of emotions we think we're going to need. And then we, on purpose or intentionally, enact those emotions and that's what the orientation is and we'll either take attract respond or preserve that's tarp and our tool is called the tarp tool so we could see what your tarp strategy is in the world so let's look at this person um so you see their their anger emotion is strongly in play here um uh 86 naturally concealed and then when working 89 um now what other emotions are in play or more consistent so consist consistency consists of being active or in play um and what that means is we're leaning we're leaning into that emotion for decision making, for actions and things like that. So we've got something going on here that's telling. So this is a pace setting profile. I want you to look at the green here, which is patience. So the concealed nature is an 84. Uh, and then we have a concealed nature of anger as at an 86. Um, so I want to show you the matrix, um, so we can see what that looks like. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of big. Um, so let's kind of move that over here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get over here. So <laughs> this is so goofy. <laughs> Let me close these blinds a little bit. That gum it. Uh, all right. Okay. I don't. <laughs> there we are. Um, uh, I'm going to use the mouse here to kind of show you something. So we've got this demanding emotion in play with a discrete emotion in play. Um, these are opposite emotions, folks. This is a very, very frustrated individual. Uh, I call this the dog you're not sure you can pet. Um, and if you hear that phrase anywhere in the world, it came from me, okay? Because I know a lot of people are starting to use that in the world of behavior. Um, but that's my idea. Um, and I came up with that because there are certain people that have two emotional frameworks going on simultaneously um uh hurry up which is anger and slow down which is patience <laughs> okay like that's a problem which is it well when you've got these conflicting uh issues between hurry up and slow down then you are unable to directly connect with the people around you because you're preoccupied with hurrying up and, and slowing down. It causes you to disassociate with the people around you so that you can look inside at how 
you're, it's like trying to shift gears and they're grinding and you can't get it into gear. Well, when that when you're doing that, you're you're not going to be focused on having a conversation with me. Um, you're too focused on what is wrong with this situation. That's what your brain is doing. Okay. So when we have pace setter people types, dogs that we don't know that we can pet, we distinct we instinctively avoid them in the world. All right. So this individual is trying to work out an internal frustration um, in their life at the moment. Now, because they're logical, so look at logic down here. Because they're logical and not emotional, which is optimism in its highest level of consistency, then they're not talking. They're working. They're thinking. They're trying to make sense of it. Logic is the tool our brains use to make sense of it whatever quote it might be. Um, all right, so that that's, that. hey, there's somebody watching. <laughs> Good, I'm glad, great. So we try, we're trying to make sense of that because I'm doing this live. Um, now, something crazy happens here. Their fear uh, becomes largely uh, un uninhibited. Um, here, uninhibited. So there's a sense of throwing caution to the wind while all this is going on. Um, uh, I'm not being, I'm not being careful. I'm not. I can see through my good eye that I, I, I'm looking all over the place. Well, you see, my eyes are wacky, okay, because I'm blind in, in this eye. So don't watch this one. It'll creep you out, fool you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm noticing it. Look from here. It looks kind of crazy. Um, I'm not on psilocybin. <laughs> um, so when, when you've got this fearlessness happening or an unawareness of errors and mistakes, uh, independence from, uh, protocols and independence from what is expected by the world, the norm. Um, when you have that going on, then when you're trying to figure out what it is that's causing the frustration, you're not really in a state of concern about doing what's expected or not making mistakes. So if you get really frustrated and it starts to boil over, then the things you do, you'll do without caution. You'll do them without thinking. Because fear is the emotion that we tap into when we're trying to think something through or plan a long-range goal or analyze what is before us in an effort to e extract from it the pieces and parts that make logical sense and are reasonable. So if you're not doing that, the odds of you doing something stupid increase dramatically. Okay? So we've got a frustrated person who has an unawareness of errors and mistakes. So they might say something they will regret later. They might do this or do that. These things can happen. And the odds are really good. They're going to justify 
their actions because the human brain never seeks verification for its decisions. The human brain only seeks justification for the way that it feels in any given moment. All right? If you want to seek verification for your decisions, then you're entering a heightened state of maturity and not a lot of people do that. If any, you have to be trained to do it. Okay? You don't do that automatically in the world. Um, All right. I'm painting a picture for you. Let us get off of that for right now. And I want to uh, uh, get off. Okay. Yeah, let's get off that. Let's move to this. Oh, okay. Compliance. All right. Compliance. What is compliance? Okay. This is how we uh, operate when we are faced with existing structure. When we're faced with established protocols, established rules, things in stone, okay? In other words, don't touch that lever while the fan is spinning. It's an established rule. It's an established protocol. It's keeping you safe and There are no other options. When that fan is turning, don't touch that lever. All right? Um, High voltage, stay away. In other words, there's no other option there. You touch that, you're dead. So compliance has to do with lining up with an established idea that has structure around it typically and almost always for the benefit of people, okay? Stop lights, stop signs, yield signs, school crossings, all these things are compliance-oriented items or objects in the world. So (laughs) several, uh, six years ago, I was driving through a school zone breaking the speed limit, not wearing a seat belt, without a driver's license, on my cell phone, with a taillight out. (laughs) Okay? It's the worst case scenario that there ever was for a traffic stop. So I get stopped by local law enforcement And he gets to the window and he goes, do you know why I stopped you? And I'm like, yeah, I was going too fast. He goes, okay, uh, let me see your license. You know, driver's license registration. That's probably the first thing he did. And I gave it to him. I said I didn't have a license, but I I had the uh, insurance because I had the app on my phone. Um, And so he looks at me and he says, listen, you're in a school zone. And the school zone speed limit is... 15 or whatever it was because it's a blinking light that says 15 miles per hour or whatever it was. I disregarded it because I wasn't paying attention. All right. Number two, he says, you don't have a driver's license. Number three, you're not wearing your seatbelt. Number four, you got a taillight out. Did you know that? I know I didn't know that. He goes, all right, this is going to cost you a fortune. I said, really? He's like, yeah. And I, I, he goes, I just can't do it to you. It's too much money. Like, it's going to sink you. He goes, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to tag you for speeding. That's it. And we're going to get your seatbelt on. Bring your driver's license with you when you're in your car. Go to the DMV and get that, you know, and get your tail, first get your taillight fixed, then go to the DMV and show them your license and show them that your taillight is fixed and we'll take these things off. I'm just ignoring the seatbelt. And it was 250 
I think, at that point. Um, it probably would have been closer to 500 um, if he just left everything else in there. Anyway, what was Stevie doing? I was non-compliant, right? Did I want to be non-compliant? I wasn't thinking about it, right? Unintentional awfulness. That's what I call that. Um, unintentional awfulness. Um, now, when you have a profile like this, the odds of that happening increase in your life. Okay, they increase in your life. Now, this is this profile here is associated with the person that we're, we've been talking about here. They're a pace setting style. They're a dog. We're not sure we can pet. They're living in a in a in a in a in a in a life of consistent frustration at the moment within this snapshot of of their life. They're non-compliant. They have no fear. They throw caution to the wind, and they look at the rules, they look at pathways and protocols, and they look at um, existing structures, and they say those don't matter. Don't tell me what to do because I want to march to the beat of my own drum. Okay, there's nothing right or wrong about wanting to march to the beat of your own drum, but don't do it in a school zone. <laughs> okay, um, so it, it, it's just this is this is what we're looking at here. So remember, I'm building for you a a criminal esque profile. All right, all right, let's get out of here. Let's look at this. That's going to be big again. So. Because I wasn't prepared, all right? All right, let's look at this. Wow, 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 all right? Let me get this out of here. All right, so wow, holy smokes. Look at this guy. Uh, number one, individuality here is is really high. It's, 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 it's in a need zone. Uh, the top two levels and all of these um, motivational drivers are called the need zone. All right. Now, and we measure that somewhere else. Um, I'll, well, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to show it to you real quick. Um, let me get this out of here so, so you could see it. You, you see right here. You see these red triangles you see them over here okay when you get in these you end up in a need zone all right and they're different for everyone for every for every motivational orientation they're they're at different places uh, but when you get in that need zone that that that's when you don't want to be uh you don't when so this person doesn't want to be non-compliant they need to be non-compliant. It's compulsory. All right. It's compulsory. Um, all right. So let's go back here. So there's this compulsory need to defy existing structure. Okay. So this is a person uh, who, you know, uh, seeks to create a world that works for them in spite of the world around them, which includes three dimensions, people, things, and ideas, all right? Resisting all that. Now, their sacrificial, their sense of sacrifice is in a diminished state of being here, okay? So they're suspicious, which means you will never know this person. I'm telling you right now, you will never know this person because to the degree that their power need is increased and to the degree that their need for self-sacrifice is diminished, 
is to the degree that you will not know the person. Okay? So what that means is getting to know this person is like trying to break into a bank vault um, without knowing the combination or having a key. So even though you're talking to them and everything might seem like it's going well and wow, you know, I really get along with so-and-so, you have no idea who you're dealing with. I'm telling you that right now. You have no idea who you're dealing with. Um, and that may or may not be at your advantage. Um, uh, I don't know. But looking at the profile, likely not good for you. Okay? Um so this is an excessive need for power, which means authority and control. Any person this person talks to is not in control of the conversation. They just think they are. They are not in control of the situation. They just think they are. Now, many will know they're not, but they won't be able to do anything about it because they're passive. So drop that power all the way down to the bottom to yielding passive submissive, that's the basement. And when you get down there, you know, you go from having a double barrel shotgun to a slingshot. You ain't got nothing. Uh, so anytime a bear walks into the campsite, you play dead. Um, so this person's highly controlling and highly defiant. All right. Notice curiosity. Okay, this is about knowledge, having the knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is power. Okay, knowledge translates to power in the world. Okay, no knowledge translates to powerlessness. Powerlessness. So people like this, when they are seeking to improve in the world, they don't learn the facts. What they do is they rely on their intuition or their past experiences for learning. What if their intuition is off? It's a big problem. Okay? They scan. They surface scan. They don't read deep enough. They don't have the patience typically to work themselves through all the levels uh, necessary to get to the quote right answer and they don't care. Okay? They don't care what the rule is or why the rules that way. They just don't want to do it. Okay? So curiosity is a why factor. Okay? And I've said this so many times, the person that knows how has a job. But the person that knows why is the boss, right? Why carries a far greater weight than how. Knowing how and why puts you in the greatest position theoretically in the world, all right? This is why anytime I've ever worked in the world for somebody else, I learned everything there was to know about what I was doing so that I could have more authority. All right. Um, and so the more you know, the more intellectual power you will have. So this person has no intellectual power. All they have is forcefulness. I don't care what it says. I'm not doing it. You see what happens? <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Um, now, this high distinctive, this high distinctiveness in the individuality and the low compliance, which is a defiance, is freedom seeking. So this person wants to be free from the control of other people, the rules of society, and the answers to all the questions. You, you getting this? Are you getting this? Are you, are you able to piece together what that will translate into in a behavioral sense? All right. All right. I want to get off that one. What can we look at now? Let's look at this. Okay. Let's get into some axiology here. Um, oh, same person. 
Now, we're looking at their structured thinking. Structured thinking represents your idea of what ought to be in the world when it comes to order, systems, the thinking necessary for organizing and planning your way through the earth. So this deals with long-term planning. This deals with forecasting, budgeting your life so that you know what to do when the time comes. Okay? So this is more of a marathon ideal than it is a sprint. This is more of maintaining your altitude all the way along through your journey without crashing. Okay? This has to do with being able to plot or set a course forward in the world. So we're going to measure clarity here. And the clarity is low. It's a 35 out of 100, which is what we call visible. Visible means you cannot see everything when it comes to what should be done in this situation. Any situation. What should be done. Now notice I'm using a future context. Why? Because structured thinking is really about systemic thinking. Systemic thinking has a future orientation. Extrinsic thinking has a present orientation and uh, your uh, intuition or intrinsic thinking has infinity. It's timeless. Okay? So people that are highly empathetic can remember people that aren't alive and reminisce in their minds about them and weep because they miss them or they may even go to the grave of loved ones and talk to them because there's no time associated with the intrinsic dimension. My grandmother has been gone 25 years, let's say. I still remember the smell of her perfume. Well, as long as you're alive, that can go on. You, your infinity stretches forward and backward endlessly. Okay? So, intrinsic orientations deal with the infinity. So, I never stop caring for you. Okay? That's infinity. Um, all right, I just wanted to explain that. So systemic is future. And what it means is when you get to the intersection, make sure you come to a full stop because that's the structural or the systemic orientation around intersections. Okay, this is a very black and white way of experiencing and navigating the world. All right, so this person here when it comes to what ought you do when you get to the intersection, they don't fully know. Now, I know you're going to think, well, how, how does anybody do that? I mean, what? Everybody knows you stop at the stop sign. No, they don't. No, they don't. I'm telling you, no, they don't. You know, when you're working with people and doing things and you ever watch somebody like, what the hell are they thinking? You're like, what were you thinking? What Have you ever seen that? This is called diminished clarity. Not everybody sees the same things. Not everybody perceives the same things in the world. All right? I'm going to take a, a, a story from the New Testament of the Bible, all right, um, simply because it makes a point here. Um, so Jesus is talking to his disciples about 
uh, the scribes, the Jewish scribes and the Pharisees, and he says about them, though seeing, they see not. Though hearing, they hear not. In other words, even though they have eyeballs, physical eyeballs, they can't perceive what, they can't see straight. They don't get it. They're in the dark when it comes to systemic thinking. When it comes to what ought to be, they're in the dark. They don't get it. They don't get it. All right? They're going to kill you because you picked up a mat on the Sabbath? Like, hello, is anybody home? Nope. They look at that and go, what? What? What are you talking about? All right, now stone them. You see? Take a think about your governors currently in the country. Think about it. Huh? You're thinking, what the? Uh-huh. They should have gone through my test before they got elected. All right? This is how this stuff works. This is how you end up with a clown show. Um, mainly because the population isn't paying attention to the people in leadership. We don't live in a democracy, folks. We live in a constitutional republic, which means we have elected representatives that stand up for us and do our bidding. And if they don't do a good job and they don't represent what we want, get them the hell out by voting. All right? This is what's wrong with the nation. I posted that on Facebook this morning. I was hot. Um, wake up, people. All right? You're living in a world that can hurt you. You got to wake up. Um, all right. Sorry. <laughs> so not only can this person not see what they ought to do in any given situation, their bias is 71% negative which means they don't care even if they saw it. But they can't see some of it, maybe half of it, and they still don't care. Okay? They're non-conforming. And they tend to look at the rules and see them as only needing to be broken. They say doing, violating Systemic structures is not as bad as it appears to be. That's what this person's thinking. So he believes rules that he disagrees with should be broken. You want to hire this guy? That's a question. Because <laughs> some of you did. All right. Um, this, this, this is how this works. All right, this is what's going on, folks, in the world that you live in. All right, I'm going to end with this. Self-direction. What is self-direction? This is really about your inner compass, your gyroscope. All right, so the clarity here, it's okay. It's not super high, it's only half. All right. So when it comes to their inner convictions, their beliefs, their ideals, their sense of commitment to them. Now, I just showed you their ideals. Look at the drive for commitment. 93% positive. Okay. Super goal directed, very overconfident that breaking the rules is the right way to go. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. You try to tell this person to stop, you might get a smile and a nod and an agreement, but guess what? They're going to walk away and not do it because they're committed. They have a competing commitment to not do what they're told. This is the foundation. It's axiomatic in their life. They go through the world looking at all the systems and protocols and situations they find themselves in and say, I ain't doing that. Uh-uh. No way. 
I'm in charge of my life. You're not in charge of it. I'm independent of you. I'm not subject to you. Who are you to tell me what I need to do? And they drive it with their determination because their anger emotion is in the 80s. The criminal mind, folks, here it is. And there's different versions of the criminal mind. There's like six of them. This is one of them. Um, and so that doesn't mean you're robbing banks. It means you could. All right? That's all it means. It doesn't mean you will ever rob a bank. It means you might think about it. Okay? But when you get in these less offensive situations, trust me, you got a profile like this, you're going to do whatever the hell you want. And you don't care who it affects because you're suspicious of them anyway. That's how some people think. So, super powerful. This person is also unconventional. Now, I failed to show you that, which means the way they think is unlike 84% of the population. So their uh, plan is not what 84 people out of 100 would likely do in the same situation. Okay? Does this mean this person won't be successful? Nope. Nope. There's tons of successful criminals, folks. The question is, do you want them in your space? That's the question, all right? And I'll leave you with that. So I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, and uh, until next time, you're listening to Steve Sisler, who's never prepared, <laughs> but I'm passionate. Um, have a great day and uh, uh, look up, all right? Keep looking up. Things are getting better, hopefully. Um, and then... Do me a favor and do yourself a favor. When elections come around, let's get rid of some of these clowns who have criminal minds. <laughs>